You may be seated. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. All who live and believe in me, even though they die, yet they shall live. That is the faith that gathers us together week after week. That is the faith that Joyce confessed. That is the faith that Joyce sang about with all her heart as she sang as a member of the congregation, as a member of the choir, and as a person who was even unafraid to get up on her own and sing. And so today, we are also going to sing. Uh, the hymns that have been chosen were hymns that are special to her and to her family, and uh, we encourage you, even if you um, don't sing well, sing anyway. <laughs> and uh, the psalm that we'll focus on says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. It doesn't say you have to be in tune all the way. Our opening hymn, well, and for those of you who are following along online, we welcome you as well. Um, our, the bulletin for the service is available on the church website if you wish to download a copy and follow along. For those of you who are here in the building, I will remind you that um, uh, if, if you wouldn't mind taking your order of service with you when the service is completed, uh, we appreciate that. It, it A, cuts down on the, the cleaning, and B, reduces the possibility for transmission of variants and viruses and whatever else we need to be worried about um, these days. Our opening hymn. A hymn often sung at the beginning of church services, the hymn Holy, Holy, Holy. I invite you to stand as we sing.
We worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. We hear and we speak together in unison words of comfort in the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. larger-than-life personality made a huge impact on all of us here and everybody streaming at home. A few of us were lucky enough to call her Grammy. I thought I would share some words of wisdom um, because Grammy liked to share just tidbits. Um, so here are some of some very important life lessons according to Grammy. Number one, buy the shoes. If you love them, buy them in all different colors and wear one of each at the same time. <laughs> when washing dishes, don't worry about getting them clean. You'll get them tomorrow. <laughs> Number three, everything tastes better with ketchup. <laughs> Pizza, literally anything. Put ketchup on it. Number four, buy the dress. It's only money. Number five, never gift a purse or a wallet to somebody without putting money in it first. Number six, peanut butter and jam is for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whichever. Number seven, the more sparkle, the better. Number eight, red, orange, and pink do go together even if you have red hair. <laughs> Number nine, coffee is not worth drinking unless it's good and strong. If in doubt, add one more scoop or three or four for good measure. Number 10, don't practice too hard. You wouldn't want to peak too soon. <laughs> <laughs> If any of you sang with her, that is legit. Sing it twice, you're done. <laughs> Number 11, live music is best. Number 12, don't leave the house without your hair and makeup done because you might see an old boyfriend. <laughs> and she did once. <laughs> Number 13, every show should have one big tap number. And number 14, rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> Hello, and 
I wanted to start off by saying thank you all for coming in memory of my grandmother, uh, Margaret Joyce Keene. Um, this is not my jacket. This is Grammy's jacket. And uh, I would have to say she's probably the most stylish and coolest person. I like to think of myself being the coolest and stylish person, but I don't think I beat her. Um, Grammy held uh, different names in our household. She carried the name in our house as Joyce, Mom, Grammy, and Grams. All of those are important in their own special way and carry very fond memories attached. Joyce was called by my mom, but my mom also called Grammy Mom. Um, when our parents got married, she asked uh, my mother to call her mom. And so one of my mom's favorite memories was her doing The Sound of Music at the KWMP. It was her 50th uh, anniversary, and they, uh, my mom played a nun alongside Grammy, as well as they sang soprano um, together. Uh, to all the great-grandchildren and uh, grandchildren, we called her Grammy and Grams. Our Grams was the best Grammy there was. She gave us laughs, a smile, music, and brought life into every family gathering. Her love for chocolate cake <laughs> obviously bode well for us as grandkids. <clears throat> Every time um, she would put us to bed, she would have a couple songs that she would uh, sing, um, one of which was called 10 o'clock spe is spelling. When she left family gatherings, she would say to every grandchild as she left or we left, um, I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. As she left and put us to bed or sang us one of those songs, she would always at the end say, see in the funny papers. <laughs> to our dad, she was called, obviously, mom. She was the mom who entertain, entertained and sang and had fun-loving nature, for example, um, her fun-loving nature was her dressed as a clown at every church picnic. And I guess my dad told me a story that one time this little girl came into the bathroom downstairs of the church and uh, she was taking off her clown costume. The little girl goes, well, now what are you going to be? <laughs> also, at the age of 13, uh, my dad would go to Wilson's Arena um, to roller skate. And he, of course, was accompanied by his mom, who taught him all their, uh, her, his fancy footwork and um, all the best things. Grammy also would entertain at some of the se seniors' residents in town with our great-grandma English. Now, uh, what was funny about their entertainment is that great-grandma English was older than majority of the people that were in the old age home. Um, Grammy's favorite color was yellow, and at the age 18, my dad bought a uh, yellow Trans Am. Now, he loved this car, and it was his dream car, and of course, Grammy loved it as well because it matched her house. <laughs> she was the disciplinary of the family. Um, I guess one year, my dad uh, got an air gun bought by Grammy, and she said, listen, whatever you do, you never point it at anybody. Well, na naturally, my dad being the young kid, um, pointed it at someone, and um, his discipline was he had to sit at the end of the stairs, and she would uh, set an egg timer uh, for half an hour, and it would just go tick, 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 tick for half an hour, and he could hear all of his friends playing outside, so he knew never to use that air gun again. That all being said, our Joyce, Mom, Grammy, and Grams. All around, we would have to say, Oh, ain't she see sweet? We'll see her walking down the street. Yes, I ask you very confidently, ain't she sweet? Thank you.
The Old Testament lesson is written in the 25th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Here we are told of the heavenly feast prepared by God for the redeemed. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Revelation chapter 7. And in these verses, the perfect bliss of those in heaven is described. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. We continue our worship with an anthem.
those who've overcome. As you are able, please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Here we have words of comfort given to us by Jesus himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn entitled, He Lives.
each and every one of you God's grace and mercy and peace through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, particularly to you, dear family, to Jennifer, Jim, Sarah, and all of the rest of the family around you this afternoon. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. That's how Psalm 100 begins. And Psalm 100 was one of Joyce's favorite scripture passage, a passage that we had the opportunity to share together while she was in the hospital. And as I read it to her, I couldn't help but chuckle the first time because it's exactly what she did. For 70 years, she came into his presence with singing. Because every time, or pretty much every time, the choir sings here at First Lutheran, uh, at Holy Cross Lutheran, I'm, this is, folks, folks, this is my second funeral today, so... <laughs> If, if I don't know who I am anymore um, by the end of this, please, please be, bear with me. And, and there's a, another big celebration, I'm told, is coming later this week. Um, at any rate, here, here at Holy Cross, the choir always comes in from the back. And I can remember the first couple of times I saw Joyce lined up back there, and I couldn't, hadn't quite put it all together yet who she was, there in her blue gown with her bright red hair and her sparkling slippers. And I thought to myself, oh my. <laughs> but then as I got to know her better, and as the years went by and the milestones of her singing in the choir passed through 65 and then on through 70, and right up until the 15th of February in 2020, the last Sunday that we had anything that resembled normal in this place, she was there. And by the end of it all, I thought to myself as I saw her come in, oh yes, this is our Joyce. For 70 years, entering in to the Lord's presence with singing and making a joyful noise to the Lord, serving Him with gladness. And dear friends and family, I think if there is one thing that we are to do today, it is that very same thing. To come before our Lord this afternoon, as I said at the beginning of the service, whether you can sing or not, and make a joyful noise to the Lord, to come before Him with gladness and enter into His house with song. I'm sure that's the way Joyce would have wanted it. But more than that, I think that's how our Lord would want it. Or else he wouldn't have inspired these words that were special to Joyce and that make up the 100th Psalm. Because in this Psalm, he tells us why it is that we are to rejoice to know that the Lord is God, it is He who made us, and we are His. We come into His presence with joy because each and every one of us is a unique and special creation of God. 
as I said to a couple people privately, this is the second funeral I'm leading this afternoon. The other was for a member of our congregation who was about the polar opposite of Joyce. Someone who never wanted to be in the limelight, whose favorite color was beige, and who was happy to just do the stuff in the background that never got noticed. She was created wonderfully and unique to be that person. Joyce, on the other hand, was created with all the colors of the rainbow, <laughs> perhaps all in one outfit or in several parts of the outfit <laughs> on a given day. And she was not afraid to get up in front of a whole place of people and sing. And it didn't matter to her, I don't think, that not necessarily every note was perfect She was just that kind of a very out there sort of person. A person who was the life of the party, who grew up in and around the dance hall, who knew how to dance, who knew how to laugh, who knew how to sing, who even knew how to behave when you accidentally find yourself taking your son's car down King Street while other people are parading their hot rods up and down the street and you just roll down the window and join the party. <laughs> Most of us would be so ashamed we'd find the quickest side street and get out of there. But not Joyce. That's how God made her. Full of life and energy and love and laughter and song and joy And we celebrate that. And we give thanks for that. But our God does more for us than simply create us, wind us up, and let us go in this world. He made us, we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. He creates us wonderfully and uniquely. But he also shepherds us. When the Bible calls us sheep, it's not a compliment. It's not highlighting how cute we are and how warm and fuzzy we can be. Whenever the Bible calls us sheep, it's actually pointing out our waywardness. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We all, like sheep, go off into our own ways rather than follow the Lord. And because of that, we need a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, we confessed a little bit ago. The one who shepherds us in the green pastures and by the still waters and through the dark valley of the shadow of death, he shepherds us. And Joyce knew her Lord as the shepherd. A shepherd who was there to find her when she strayed, a shepherd who was there to love her and forgive her and stand by her on the happiest days of her life and the saddest days of her life. That's the relationship that was begun with her in the waters of holy baptism. That's the relationship that was confirmed in her as a young child and then reaffirmed here at Holy Cross. That was the faith that was at the heart and core of who she was her entire life. I only had one opportunity, unfortunately, to visit with Joyce in